everybody out this evening. Remember those who requested prayer. Uh, Mary Cochran, Fred's sister, Mary Cochran Engel, cancer's pretty bad, and, and she's got some procedures to go through tomorrow, and and uh, a PET scan on when or tomorrow also, right? I've got to sneak. <coughs> don't usually stop with one that's the problem I usually go on for a little bit let's uh, begin our worship service in hymn number 200 before we do that uh, no word on mom and uh did good some word on Larry Brown he's doing a little better he's off the ventilator and not speaking but <coughs> people are, people are going to enjoy this on streaming aren't they At least I'm not throwing up or anything. That's not a problem. Uh, number 496, Victory in Jesus. <clears throat> I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me, I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his precious blood's gave the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, Forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion. He is built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. And about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. 477. Years I've spent in vanity and pride. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not the Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last. 
confess my sin, I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned, till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. But now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. have your Bibles, turn with me to the 34th chapter of Exodus. I want to read one verse of scripture tonight. Verse 21. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest in earring time and harvest thou shalt rest. Let us pray. Now, Father in heaven, we bless you and thank you for that perfect rest that you have given to your people in the work, the finished work of Jesus Christ. We are thankful for the knowledge of who we are what we are for you have shown us in your word and by experience that there's nothing we have to offer to you you have shown us in your word that 20 centuries ago our savior hung on a cross and died in the room instead of his people actually finished their redemption before we ever were before we existed before the man, first man was made out of the dust of the earth you chose a people unto yourselves for salvation and Jesus Christ came into this world and took on the form of sinful flesh yet without sin And in that work on the cross, fully satisfied your law and your justice. It was made to be our righteousness. And we know by your word that we contributed nothing at all. We are sinners saved by your grace. Pardoned by your mercy. And ever full of the knowledge. Christ is worthy to be praised because he did it all. Father, we pray for those who are sick, members, especially Miss Mary Engel, that she's going to be diagnosed with this cancer. We pray that you'll be with the doctors. We pray that they'll be able to do something for her and help her. Pray for her healing. Father, for Brother Marvin Stoniker, we continue to pray for him and for Larry Brown and for the others who've requested prayer. 
to ask, Lord, your help for them. And help us tonight, Father, as we look at your word to sing the praises and honor of Jesus Christ the Lord for what he's done. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain that has redeemed us by his blood out of every kindred, nation, tongue, and people and made us kings and priests unto our God. We are humbled, brought down to the dust, knowing full well that what he did for us we could never deserve. And we deserve perdition and hell. Yet because of your mercy and grace, we'll never, ever suffer that horrible end. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, this command in verse 21 is part of the final words of the, of the Lord to Moses on the second trip up to Sinai when he redid the tables of stone that had been broken. And the Lord here reiterates the importance of keeping the Sabbath. This is one of the commandments given when the first ten commandments were given in Exodus chapter 20. And then he reiterates the importance of that, a complete rest on the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday. And this, as we all know, and as all the laws and commandments of the Old Testament were fulfilled, complete, and finished in the life and death of the Lord Jesus Christ, this Sabbath means more than just the Old Testament meaning. The church is not under any law, save for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has made them free from the law of sin and death. The believer is not under the law, but under grace. The Sabbath day is Saturday. It's the seventh day of the week. That has not been changed to Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week, and throughout the New Testament it is called the Lord's Day. The Sabbath is always Saturday. It's still celebrated or, or recognized or practiced by the Jewish religion, by some under the fall under the realm of Christianity called the Seventh-day Adventists because they worship on Saturday and do what they want to on Sunday, I guess. But the, the church worships or the Lord on the Lord's Day. That's the first day of the week. We find its origins on the first day of creation over in Genesis chapter 1. That first day, which was the morning and the evening of the first day, we find the origin of the Lord's Day. It says in Genesis chapter 1, in verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. We know that's not the sun, moon, and stars. That is the heavenly light. If you'll notice uh, that... Uh, this he, after the Spirit moved upon the face of the waters, after the earth was had become dull and, uh, or uh, void and, and darkness, which represented Adam in his fall, the Lord said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. There's none good but God. And God divided the light from the darkness. That's election. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. That was the first day. Creation took place. It began with the calling forth of light on Sunday, <laughs> the first day of the week. That's where the origin of the Lord's Day came. We know from John chapter 1 that Jesus Christ created all things and that he is the light of the world. He said, I am the light of the world. If he that believeth in me shall not dwell in darkness. So that light in the first chapter of Genesis was Jesus Christ the Lord. And that was his day, the morning and, and evening of the first day. The first day was the Lord's day, and the light thereof was Jesus Christ. Now John was in the spirit on the Lord's day, it says in Revelation, when he received the revelation of Jesus Christ on the Isle of Patmos. 
the church, according to Acts 20 and verse 7, in its visible existence, gathered to worship on the Lord's Day. Paul met with the church, it says, on the Lord's Day. Now, the Sabbath is not the Lord's Day. It's not the Lord's Day, and the Lord's Day is not the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not even really a day. It's a rest. It's called the Sabbath day and, or the day of rest. It is actually a state of being and also a profound declaration. A profound declaration. Sabbath means rest and the believer's rest is in Jesus Christ and that rest is perpetual and occurs every moment of a believer's life. So if you are a child of God tonight, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you observe the Sabbath with every breath you take. With every breath you take, because you observe the rest of Jesus Christ. Even as the believer does the works that the Lord has ordained for him to do, he is resting in Christ. The believer does not observe Sabbath days, or the Sabbath day. There were eight Sabbaths in the New Test or in the Old Testament in Leviticus, eight different Sabbaths. These were feasts. These were feast days: Rosh Hashanah, uh, 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 Hanukkah, uh, Passover, uh, the day of Feast of Unleavened Bread. You had years of fast or years of Sabbaths. You had a, a week of Sabbaths, uh, rest. There were seven weeks of Sabbath. You had the seven years of Sabbath. You had the Jubilee, which was seven times seven, 49 years, uh, and then the 50th year was a Sabbath. It was called Jubilee when all the debts were, were uh, forgiven. People were allowed to go back into their homes if they had put it on lien. Uh, if they owed money to somebody, it was they didn't have to pay it. All this was a picture of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those were Sabbaths of the Old Testament. We don't observe them. We preach about them because they point to the Lord Jesus Christ. But we don't deserve them, and we are not to allow anyone to judge us in the matter. And I have friends who are what they call Sabbath keepers, and they believe that Sunday is the Sabbath day, and they keep it. But Sunday's not the Sabbath day. Sabbath day is Saturday. It's Saturday. But over in Colossians, Paul made it clear because of the work of Christ that we're not to allow anyone to judge us in this matter of not observing the Sabbath. Well, that's Colossians chapter 2, rather. It says this in verse 13, speaking of the crucifixion of Christ, and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, you Gentiles, he hath quickened together with him and forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, that's the law, which was contrary to us, the law was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made sure of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore, since that's the case, since Christ has done all this for us, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or in a new moon or in Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body or the substance is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, under the old covenant, the penalty for doing work on the Sabbath was death. It says as in Exodus chapter 31 and verse 15, if you do any work on the Sabbath day in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, you were put to death. That's how important this was to the Lord. The strength gains emphasis in our text with the mention of the two times of the year, earring and a harvest. Our Lord makes that clear. He says this, six days shalt thou work. Six days shalt thou work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest in earring time and in harvest. These were the busiest times of the year. This was the time when people got up really early and stayed up really late and worked 15, 20 hours a day. Even in the busiest times, earring is plowing, preparing the earth for sowing. 
and harvesting is gathering of the crops in these times which will possibly require a seven-day work week. But they couldn't do that. Even in the busiest time, the Sabbath was to be observed on pain of death. The amount of work or the necessity of it being done did not mitigate the command. Six days shalt thou work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. Now, why was breaking the Sabbath a capital offense? It goes back to the creation and the glory of God for its entire accomplishment. That's what the Sabbath is all about. That's what the Sabbath was all about. Creation was accomplished in six days. And on the seventh day, God rested from the work of creation. And that seventh day that he rested is called the Sabbath day. Now, he did not rest because, uh, uh, because he was tired or because he was weary. All he did was speak these things into existence. They are called his work, the work of creation, because he's the one that did it. He rested from the work of creation because the work of creation was finished. That's why he rested. It was finished because there was nothing left to do in creation. That's why he rested. So he alone, by his wisdom and his power and his sovereign will, had done it. He had done it himself. Now, since man was one of the things that was created in this process, man had no part in the accomplishment of it. His rest was a declaration that the glory for creation was his alone. He's the one that created. So when he rested, the creation was done. It was finished. It was a finished work, so there was nothing left to do. So he didn't do anything else <laughs> in creation. He had created it all. That's the language of Scripture. Turn with me to a few passages. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, the verse 3, it says, All things were made by him. That is the word that became flesh, the word that was God and was with God. That is Jesus Christ. All things were made by him. And while without him was not anything made that was made. But he was the one that did it. Now, do you see any human being other than himself involved in that equation? There's nobody there. Look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, it says this. It says, For by him, that is by Jesus Christ, were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were made created by him and for him. <laughs> there he is. They were created by him and they were created for him. Back in Exodus chapter 20, we read why we keep the Sabbath day, or why the Sabbath day was kept in, under the old covenant. In Exodus chapter 20, and verse 8, it says this, Remember the Sabbath day, and keep it holy, or separate. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, the rest of the Lord our God. In it shall no, uh, shall not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, or maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor a stranger that is within thy gates. In one place in Scripture it said, if you pick up a stick on the Sabbath day, they'll kill you. <laughs> they'll stone you to death. He goes on to say, for in six, and here's why. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. Blessed that seventh day because it's a day of rest. It declares, or profoundly declares, that the work of creation is finished. The work of creation is finished. For a created thing, us, for a created thing to do work on the Sabbath, on the day when God rested. And that's what the Sabbath is about, his rest. 
for a person to do any work on the Sabbath was to claim that God had not finished the work. There was something left to be done, that man must have some part in the glory of that. And man was one of the creatures, one of the things created out of the dust of the earth. To work on the Sabbath day is to be a Johnny come lately to the work of creation, and his presumption to insert himself in the, is worthy of death. That's what God said. That's what it's about. God did the work. He finished it. Everything was done, nothing left to be done, so he didn't do anything. For you to say you have something to do with that, you'll stone you. That's what it said. You'll be stoned to death. So, the Sabbath was what? A shadow. Didn't he just read that in Colossians? It was a shadow, but it wasn't a substance. Sabbath speaks of Christ's work and his finished work. So decisions and free will and walking the aisle and getting the altar or the mourner's bench is working on the Sabbath because the Sabbath speaks of the rest of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he finished the work of what? The new creation. He's the creator of the first creation and he's the creator in the new creation. Paul said the Sabbaths that were a shadow, but Christ is the substance. So whatever those all that went on back there, God resting on the seventh day and declaring that day a holy day and not allowing any man to work. And if you'll read about the eight different Sabbaths in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you'll find that every one of them was tagged with a stinger. That's what we used to call when I was in radio, we'd tag a commercial with a stinger or a hook, somebody to make somebody think about it. Every one of those Sabbath days are tagged with a, with a holy stinger. And that stinger is this, there shall be no servile work done on that day. No servile work done on that day. So God's rest, God, so God's rest after creation was a shadow of another rest of which Christ was the substance. And that rest occurred after the new creation of which Christ is the substance of that. Look at Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, in verse 10, it says this, And have put on the new man, that's the new creation, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that what? Created him. <laughs> Created him. Him. In 2 Corinthians 5 17, it says, In Christ you're a new creature, a new creation. All things, all old things are passed away. You're a new creation. Everything you thought about doing under the old covenant, that's gone. That's that's the basic meaning of that. All the old things are passed away. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 15 says, Circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything. Keeping the law or not keeping the law doesn't avail anything. You can say, well, I'm not circumcised. I don't believe I'm not. That don't avail anything. You can say it all day long. You cannot do it. You cannot keep the law for righteousness. Or you can say, I kept the law for righteousness. That don't avail anything. It avails to nothing. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything but a new creature a new creation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this new creation is Christ, is in Christ. On the cruel cross, hanging in an agony of blood, our great Savior cried with a loud voice, it is finished. What does that mean? There's nothing left to do. That's what finished means. It is finished. It is complete. It's a done deal. Tis done, the old song says, the great transaction's done. I am the Lord's and he is mine. When he said it is finished, he gave up the ghost, dying the death that was due his elect. And having finished the work, he entered into his rest. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 4. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, it says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, for he that is entered into his rest he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. And God did in creation. Christ did in the new creation. 
on the cross of Calvary. After he had finished the work, where did he go? He's not out here trying to get people to be saved. He's sitting in glory on the right hand of the Father having finished the work of salvation. He rested after finishing the work of redemption. Christ is the substance of the Sabbath after having finished the work, and he allows no man to, to claim or to be a participant in that work. You're not allowed. You see, he finished the work. He did the work. He's the creator. All things were created by him. But the new creation is his creation. And after he did it, he rested. That means it's done. You don't have anything to do with it. You never had anything to do with it. It's his work. He gets all the glory. Christ is the substance of the Sabbath. Having finished the work allows no man to be or claim to be a participant in that work. On pain of death. <laughs> Penalty the same. Eternal death. Humanity is utterly prohibited from claiming any part in the salvation of their own soul. You want to get in on that? You want to say you had something to do with it? That's where it is dead. That's a capital crime. The Sabbath of old was not about man taking a break. It was about honoring God for finishing the work. Resting in Christ is not about being tired it's about glorifying Christ for finishing the work and there is nothing for us to do Paul told Timothy God has saved us and called us with a, call us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Jesus Christ before the world began it's all taken care of and I love this passage of scripture Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 this says it all God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom he also made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory the outshining of God the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power then you have this little word when something has happened Something has taken place, because when is used. When? Sometime. When? When he had purged. Past tense. What does that word mean? Remitted, put away, annihilated, any way you want to put it. When, when he had by himself, he finished the work, by himself purged our sins. He sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Why did he sit down? Because there's nothing left to do. The old priests, they didn't sit down. There was no furniture to sit down in the, in, in the tabernacle. There was no, no, no cease of the works in the Old Testament. These things were continued 24 hours a day. These ceremonies had to be done exactly on time and exactly precisely as they were done all the way through the old code. No priest ever sat down. The high priest didn't sit down. He didn't sit down, not in that tabernacle, not in the work of salvation, not in the work of, uh, of the Lord, never sat down. But Christ, after he had perfected forever them that are sanctified, he sat down. Why? It's the Sabbath. He's the rest wherein we find sweet rest. He's finished the work, and there's nothing for us to do save to rest in it and lie down and I'm telling you about lying down and resting I love to do that it takes no effort on my part I just flop you rest in the Lord Jesus Christ's work he's finished it don't go put your two cents worth in it he's finished the work the shadow the Sabbath of the Old Testament very strictly observed were merely a shadow. Christ is the substance. Father, bless us to understand and pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right.